Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we're not just looking at one, we're not just looking at two, we're not just looking at three. Oh, what? Oh, it is three? We're looking at three budget active jazz basses in today's Head to Head. To Head. Let's check it out. Today, we're looking at three budget jazz basses between the prices of $350 and $500 US. But there's a twist. We're looking at jazz basses with active electronics. And I had to get a special guitar stand to fit them all in one shot. So here we go. The first and most visible is the Sire V3 four string bass. These can be had brand new for $369 shipped direct from Sire. This bass features a mahogany body and a really nice burst finish. It also has a one-piece maple neck, rosewood fretboard with 20 frets at 34-inch scale. The real stars of the show for the Sire are the preamp and the pickups. Even included on their base model base, they have a three-band preamp with a mid-sweep and a passive tone control as well. You're getting loads of versatility for the money here. The one downside to this is there's a load of knobs on here. Seven to be exact when you count the stacked ones. And on the fly, it can be a little overwhelming to stare down and see seven knobs and have to remember what they do on the fly. That being said, I definitely appreciate the versatility at this price point. Next up is this bass, the Bacchus Global WL434ACT. Now this is an interesting bass. I got it for about $350 plus shipping from Japan. Without shipping, that makes this the cheapest base of all three. However, with shipping, it makes it the most expensive. This particular model is part of the Global series, and that's their import line that's made in the Philippines instead of being made in Japan. This base also features a mahogany body, except this is finished in a gorgeous white burst. It gets a little more transparent in the center where you can see the grain a little bit. Overall, I really like the finish of this base. Now, unlike the Sire and the Squire, this base has 21 frets as opposed to 20. This bass also features Bacchus electronics, including two single coil pickups, a two band preamp, a volume, and a blend control. Aesthetically, I really like the color combination of this bass. I like the gray pearl pickguard and that contrast with the white body. Stylistically speaking, this one hits it out of the park. And our final contender is this, the Squire Contemporary HH Active Jazz Bass. Now, unlike the other two basses, this features dual humbuckers instead of two single coil jazz pickups. This model features an alder body with this particular one coming in in a good looking matte black. For the neck, we're looking at a 34 inch scale, 20 fret maple fretboard and a maple neck. Just like the Bacchus, this also features a painted headstock, whereas the Sire has a natural headstock. 
though I have to note that some of the finish options for the Sire include a matching headstock. The controls for the Squire include a master volume, blend, passive tone control, and a two-band preamp. That's boost only. Now before we begin, here's how I'm going to be doing this comparison. I'm going to be ranking these basses 1 to 3 in 7 categories. We're going to be looking at aesthetics and design, build quality, hardware quality, electronics quality, where we look at the pickups and preamp, the quality of the neck, the accessibility of the bass, or how easy it is to get, and then the price and value. Now that we're done with the introductions, let's get playing. You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand can turn back to normal. Thanks. So this is the Sire V3. This is the cheapest instrument you can buy direct from Sire. These have an MSRP of $369 direct from Sire, as well as most online retailers. These instruments have been causing a lot of waves in the bass community due to their low price and relatively high quality. <laughs> It's not unheard of to find an active bass around that price range. However, having a bass with this level of tonal flexibility at this price point is unheard of. From what I understand, Sire makes everything in-house and doesn't outsource production of any of the components for this bass. So I guess by ultimately producing a lot of volume, and by selling direct, they're able to keep the cost down. I like how the pull pieces on the pickups are engraved a little bit, and aren't just a flat metallic magnetic surface. Now let's talk about this preamp. Here's what you got to work with. Your master volume, your blend, your tone control, passive tone. You got your bass control, you have your mid control, you have your mid frequency control, and your treble control. You also have an active passive switch. You have all that in a bass that's $369.99, and that's pretty crazy. Let's check out these pickups and this preamp in a bit more detail. Let's check out this bass in passive mode. Not bad. Now let's check out these pickups individually and see what they sound like. Let's start with the neck pickup first. Not bad. Off the bat, I am noticing some single coil hum, and that's to be expected with a single coil pickup. It's not the worst hum I've ever heard, and these pickups sound pretty decent. Now let's check out the bridge pickup. Not bad either. I think the bridge pickup is in the 60s position, as opposed to the more desired 70s position that gives it that more honky tone. Now let's check out this preamp. Here's the bass with everything flat. Now let's turn up the bass to 50%. 
And here's the bass at 100%. That's a lot of bass. Okay. I'm gonna leave that at 50%. Next, let's sprinkle in a little bit of that treble control. And let's bring that treble up to 100% and see what it's like. And I'll bring that down to 50% again. And finally, let's check out this mid control, because this is really interesting. Here's the mid at 50%. And here's the mid at 100%. That's a bit overwhelming as well, so let's keep that at 50%. This preamp has an interesting trick up its sleeve with the mid frequency control. That's something very uncommon at this price range. And it actually works. Check it out. It definitely gives you a lot of tonal flexibility, especially for a jazz bass at this price range. Now everything isn't all sunshine and rainbows in the land of Sire. The one category where they've notoriously had issues is hardware, specifically the bridge and tuners. With the tuners, these are generally not that great in terms of quality. I actually had a really hard time getting this tuned up precisely. It was hard to dial in my tuning with precision as the tuners would either jump way too high or way too low with a turn. The bridge is also a bit of a bummer. Though you do have a string through option here, the bridge itself is proprietary using a four screw design with one screw at each corner. That means you can't just install an aftermarket hip shop bridge or something else without getting this re-drilled. And that involves drilling it yourself or taking it to your local guitar tech or luthier. That's one thing I really have to knock this for, considering the other two contenders here are using the standard Fender five screw design that has a lot of aftermarket options. Now, before I move on to the next bass, this does say Marcus Miller on the headstock, so does it slap? <laughs> This thing has some really good slap tone. Though if you're expecting to get the real Marcus Miller tone like from his Fender Signature Jazz Bass, you're really not gonna get it. This thing comes close and is definitely better than your standard Squire out of the box Jazz Bass. However, you're not gonna become Marcus Miller just by having this bass. You really gotta work out your thumb. <laughs> On to the next bass. <laughs> this 
This is the Squire Contemporary Active Jazz Bass, featuring dual humbuckers. With an MSRP of $450, this is the most expensive bass of the three, not including shipping. Now, unlike the other two basses that feature mahogany body, this is using an old-fashioned alder body, and it's finished in this good-looking matte black. However, if you're expecting a quality matte black finish, look elsewhere. This kind of feels almost like a rhino lining. Compared to the matte finishes of other guitar manufacturers, this one is a bit of a letdown and feels really, really cheap. This bass is featuring two SQR humbucking pickups, a master volume control, a master blend control, a passive tone control, and then a treble and bass boost only. I feel like this is a bit of an odd choice, only having boost for the preamp. I feel that that really limits your tonal flexibility, especially compared to what the other two offer. I'm glad that they offer the passive tone control, however, which is absent in the Bacchus. Now before we check out this preamp, let's see what these pickups sound like. Let's start with the neck pickup. Now, let's check out the bridge pickup. Oh, this doesn't sound too bad either. Again, it doesn't really sound like a jazz bass, but it doesn't sound bad. Now here's what the tone sounds like at 100%. Here's the tone at 50%. And here's the tone all the way down. And finally, here's the two band preamp. First, let's look at the bass control. Here's the bass at 50%. And here is the bass at 100% boosted. And now here's just the treble at 50%. And the treble at 100%. Lastly, here's how she slaps. It doesn't sound bad. So overall, I don't think this bass really can justify its $450 price point. I have to knock this bass for the quality of the tuning machines, which feel a bit cheap, though weren't as troublesome as the ones on the Squire. The bridge, on the other hand, is actually quite nice. It's a nice high mass bridge and isn't a terrible design, so no complaints there. And if you want to change it, it is a standard 5 bolt pattern. So there should be plenty of other options available if you so choose. I really need to knock this base for the electronics. I appreciate that everything is sized in a standard fashion so you can replace things pretty easily. However, at $450, I really don't want to have to gut this thing in order to get a decent instrument out of it. The neck itself does feel a bit cheap compared to the other two. The satin finish that they use is quite thin, and you can tell that the masking job that they did when painting the headstock wasn't the best. I personally find the preamp here absolutely useless, and I don't think that this is a value-added accessory. In fact, I think it's the opposite. 
The fact that you need a battery to operate this preamp is sad. It does nothing. It just boosts 80% of the tonal range of the bass, either going from the bottom 80% or the top 80%. So it seems like it's kind of covering the same ground with both the treble and bass control. I really wanted to like this instrument, and I have to say that this is much better than the Squire P bass that I had before. However, I think Squire is definitely missing the mark here with this bass, both with the price point as well as the included electronics. So far, Squire is 0 for 2 in my book. Now, let's check out our last contender. This is the Bacchus Global Series Woodline 434 Active. This is the most obscure of the three, as Bacchus is a Japanese brand. However, this bass was actually made in the Philippines. The Global Series is the cheaper import line of Bacchus basses that are usually handcrafted in Japan. And these have a much smaller price tag compared to their Japanese counterparts. However, exactly what the MSRP for this bass is, I really don't know. As I mentioned earlier, I purchased this for $350 plus $150 shipping. That makes it the cheapest base of the three before shipping. However, with shipping, it makes it the most expensive. I also see the same model going for about $550 plus shipping or as much as $1,000 on eBay. So I'm not really sure what the exact MSRP is here. So I'm going to go by what I purchased it for. Like the Sire, this base features a mahogany body and like the Squire, this has an all maple neck. However, the neck on this is much higher quality than the other two. I did knock the Squire for feeling cheap, and the Sire's finish, there's nothing wrong with it, I would call it average. However, I would call the neck finish on this exceptional, especially for the price. I also think that the painted headstock looks great, and the tuners that they use here are of the highest quality of the three, which I really appreciate. Nobody likes buying a bass and then having to shell out about a hundred bucks for some hipshot tuners because the ones that were included were kind of crap. So, thanks Bacchus. Moving down to the body, you have a standard Fender-style five-screw bridge. Nothing special about it, but you can easily replace it with a hipshot or something else of your choosing. As for the electronics, you have two generic-style jazz bass pickups, single coil, and then you have a two-band preamp. So the controls here are volume, volume, treble, bass. Just like the Squire, there's no passive option here, and you're somewhat limited in regards to what you can do. However, unlike the Squire and like the Sire, this preamp offers both a boost and a cut for the targeted frequencies. Well, enough talking. Let's check out these pickups and this preamp. Here's both pickups together with the preamp centered. <laughs> Now, let's check out the neck pickup. Ooh, you hear that? Of the three, this one is definitely the noisiest. Yeah, there's no two ways about it. These pickups are pretty noisy. Now let's check out the bridge pickup. Yeah, also quite noisy. Now let's check out this preamp, and I'm just going to use both pickups for now on because I don't want to listen to any more of that hum. Here's everything with the preamp completely flat. Now here's the bass, 50%. And here's the bass at 100%. The 
bass control on this definitely gives you a lot of boost without going overboard like the Sire or doing nothing at all like the Squire. So good middle ground here. Now let's check out the treble control. Here's the treble at 50%. And the treble at 100%. Again, just like with the bass control, I feel like it gives you enough of a boost without being overwhelming like in the Sire. And lastly, how does she slap? I'd say she slaps pretty good. In fact, of all three, I'd say that this bass has the best slap tone. That is my personal opinion though. And keep in mind that slap tone is only a small part of one category. And we're gonna be ranking these basses using seven different criteria. So without further ado, let's have a look at the rankings. So with the first category, design, I'm gonna give first place to the Bacchus. I feel like the design overall is the most cohesive. I like the headstock design, whereas the headstock on the Sire, in my opinion, is absolutely hideous. I think the Sire is a great bass, but that headstock, no matter how you look at it, with a painted headstock, without a painted headstock, four string, five string, high end model, low end model, I just think the headstock is absolutely atrocious. Ugh. The Squire comes in second place with its modern look featuring a matte black finish and soap bar humbuckers. Last place for design is the Sire. I think it's a pretty regular looking jazz bass. It's not bad looking by any means other than the headstock, which I've ranted about enough. So that's three points to the Bacchus, two points to the Squire, and one point to the Sire. Next up is build quality and fit and finish. First place, again, goes to the Bacchus. The neck sits cleanly in the neck pocket. Everything feels sturdy and the paint job is immaculate. They did a great job masking the paint along the headstock, so the matching headstock came out really, really nice looking. Second place goes to the Sire. The Sire's neck does sit outside of the pocket just a little bit. However, the fit and finish of the rest of the base is pretty average. The quality of the finish work on the body is nothing to complain about. However, the transition of the gloss for the face of the headstock is a little bit messy. And finally, in last place, we have the Squire. Even though it has an alder body, I feel like the quality of that is diminished by this really cheap finish. I own and have owned several other matte finished guitars, and this one just feels like a cheap rhino lining. It's very rough and plasticky feeling, and not the same premium feel you find in other matte finishes. I also found the finish on the neck to be the cheapest of the three, and gives the neck overall a very inexpensive and unfinished feel and not the good kind of unfinished. Next category is hardware quality. Again, three points to Bacchus. The high quality tuners and bridge, as well as the standard screw configuration, make this a great base out of the box, as well as one that can easily be customized. Next, we have the Squire. Though the tuners also felt really cheap, the bridge on the Squire is actually not a bad bridge. And the Squire is the only base that features a toolless battery compartment. Whereas the Bacchus requires you to remove the rear cavity cover, and the Sire has a separate cavity cover just for the battery. And lastly, Sire. I really have to knock Sire for this. The tuning machines on this particular base are really bad, and you see a lot of people replacing them out at the box. However, I don't want to drop another 80 plus dollars on some hip shot tuners on a brand new instrument. I feel like the tuning machine should be a bit higher quality. The bridge, on the other hand, is something that really makes me upset. The proprietary screw layout. This creates a bit of a barrier for people who want to customize this instrument. If you're not happy with the bridge, you would have to drill new mounting holes for this and potentially damage the finish and lower the value of the instrument. The other two bases feature a standard Fender 5 screw design, so you have a plethora of bridges to choose from. With the Sire, you got nothing. Thumbs down to Sire there. Shaking my head. For pickup and preamp quality as well as sound quality, number one goes to the Sire. That preamp is a beast, especially for the price. Having so many tonal options gives you a ton of versatility in terms of what genres you want to play in. 
The pickups on this are also the best of the three, and definitely not as noisy as the Bacchus is, even though these are single coil as well. Second place goes to the Squire. I feel like the pickups aren't that bad, and you do get a passive tone control. However, the preamp is pretty bad. And last place is the Bacchus. Though the preamp itself isn't bad, those pickups are not great. And I understand it's an entry-level instrument. But on the other hand, you have both Sire and Squire able to produce instruments that aren't nearly as loud. So get with it, Bacchus. Next, let's talk about the necks. First place, we have the Bacchus. The fit and finish of the Bacchus neck is easily the best of the three. The fretwork is really spot on, and I find myself having a great time playing that bass. Second place is the Sire. The Sire also has a great neck, but I think that the quality itself isn't as good as the Bacchus particularly the rolled fret ends and the shaved down sides of the fretboard, it feels a little odd to me. And upon closer scrutiny, you can see that it's not the most clean execution of that. Whereas the Bacchus, on the other hand, has a very clean and nearly perfect fret job without resorting to weird tactics like rolling the fretboard because I've never actually really seen that in any other bases and I have many bases. And lastly, the Squire. The fretwork is okay, however the finish of the neck is not great. It feels really cheap, and the finish on the headstock also looks really poorly done. Next, let's talk about accessibility. Sire is easily number one here. If you want to buy a Sire, you can easily buy a Sire anywhere. You can go direct to their website, you can go to a number of online retailers, and I do believe that there are certain stores stocking it now, but you can't really go in stores with the whole global pandemic and whatnot. So the Sires, especially in the US, are very easy to come by. Next, in second place, is the Squire. And though Squires themselves are very common, I feel like their greater variety of their model lineup makes this particular model a bit harder to find as opposed to a Sire V3, which can be had at any day, any time very easily. And in last place, we have the Bacchus. How do you get a Bacchus in the US? I don't even know and I have one. No, I'm just kidding. To get a Bacchus in the US, you either have to go through a Japanese retailer or VSN Guitars up in Canada. I believe they're the closest Bacchus dealer to the US. And the last category, we're gonna look at the price and value. Number one again is the Sire. At 369, this thing is an incredible value. That's 369 shipped anywhere, direct from Sire or through one of the many online retailers. That is a tremendous value for what you're getting here. As I mentioned before, the hardware isn't the best, the tuners especially. So if you're really set on this instrument, be prepared to replace those tuners if they start to get on your nerves. Second place is the Squire. Though it is the most expensive of the three when you don't include shipping, the Squire is an okay bass. And regardless of which of these three instruments you choose, you're gonna get a good bass. I mentioned the deficiencies of each three of these, and they all have their strengths and weaknesses, but neither one of these does everything well. And third place for the price and value is the Bacchus, because what's the price? At $500 including shipping, this is the most expensive base when you include shipping from Japan. I also see these models go for around $500 to $600, if not closer to $1,000 on eBay. So it's really hard to gauge the actual value of this instrument. That being said, out of all three, I feel like the Bacchus needs more work in terms of mods out of the box. So that's it. Let's add up all the points. It looks like the Sire got 15 points, the Squire got 12, and the Bacchus got 15 points. We have a tie. Well then, I'll leave you with this. The Sire is a better instrument out of the box. I feel like at 369, it's a tremendous value and it can take you a long way. That being said, the cheap hardware and limited modability, relatively speaking, might have you looking towards another base in the future after you get the Sire versus upgrading it. So if you want a base that you just want to set it and forget it, the Sire is your instrument. However, those of you that want a great foundation for mods, I think you can't go wrong with the Bacchus. The Bacchus has superior build quality to the Sire, however the electronics are what's letting it down. Getting yourself an aftermarket preamp instead of pickups can let that Bacchus loose. Well that was quite a video. Now I guess I gotta give these bases some ratings, huh? Well let's do this. Let's start with the Squire. 
I'm going to go ahead and rate that two claws out of five. I feel like at $450, there's better options out there for your money. However, if you want a jazz based body with a cheapy matte finish and humbucking pickups, I guess this is your base. Next up is the Bacchus. I'm going to go ahead and rate that base three claws out of five. Even though it's the most expensive and most well constructed, I feel like the electronics could really use some work. I'd say that this is an average value overall, and if you plan on keeping this base long term or modding it, I think you're going to really enjoy it, as the neck is top notch. And finally, the Sire V3. I'm going to rate this four claws out of five. Even though its glaring weak point is the hardware, I feel like this awesome preamp and really solid pickups make this an extremely great value for 369 shipped. Compared to our $400 Mexican P base, we're getting a lot more bang for our buck here. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about these three bases. And as always, until we groove again.